Hello and welcome to Thrive and Vive. Yesterday I had the distinct pleasure of helping my darling 18-year-old daughter apply for a sales position with a major American corporation. And during the survey part of the application, they asked an interesting hypothetical. You have a colleague who is trying to steal all the business and make you look bad. How do you deal with that conflict? Do you take it up with them directly, go to your manager, ignore that? And I walked away with two points. Number one is it's not an easy question to answer. And number two, it's an important question because how we deal with conflict to a large degree will determine the quality of our lives, be it our personal lives or our business lives. And I think if you would ask people, many of them would say, you know, they're conflict avoidant, whereas others would say they're spoiling for a good fight wherever they can find it. But the Mishnah, the oral tradition in Perki Avot, chapters of the fathers, I think warns us that we can't really fall in, out in either camp because there are times when conflicts is very positive and very important and times when it's downright negative and we have to be able to make the distinction so the Mishnah goes on to instruct us and it says all conflicts that are for the sake of heaven will ultimately endure whereas all conflicts that are not for the sake of heaven will ultimately not endure and then it goes on to give us examples positive conflicts is exemplified by the disputes we find in the Talmud between the two great sages Hillel and Shammai and negative conflict is exemplified by a dispute we find in this week's Torah reading when a man named Korach leads a rebellion against Moshe for leadership of the Jewish people. And I think the lesson of the mission is pretty straightforward. On a simple level, what we're being told is whenever our disputes are characterized by a genuine desire to discover truth, even though we may not all be right, nevertheless, we each bring a perspective that rounds out the picture and ultimately helps us to have a greater clarity. It leaves us with something of lasting value. But when disputes are fueled by personal agendas and ego, there's really nothing good that ever comes out of it. And I think that's something we can relate to. But there's a question. Don't we all believe we're on the side of right? Isn't that why we're passionate for our causes? So, so how does this mission help us? And I think the answer lies in the examples that the Mishnah gives us. You see, when it came to Hillel and Shammai, no matter how often they disputed each other, their arguments were always characterized by a very profound level of respect and high regard, a sense that each one has something to offer. So much so, we're taught that even though the ruling was always in favor of Hillel, nevertheless, the school of Hillel always learned Shammai's opinion first. But when it came to Korach, we see that rather than arguing the issues, he goes after Moshe, the man, his integrity, his honesty, and ultimately attempts to demonize him in the eyes of the Jewish people. I think the lesson is a very important one. We so often get caught up in the content of our disputes, the arguments themselves, and in so doing, we miss a more important issue, which is the feeling. Whenever we're feeling disrespect, dislike, a sense of judgment or in any way a, a desire to demonize the other person, it's a pretty good sign that we are not L'Shem Shemayim. We are not ultimately after truth. And this is something that is so often lost today in so many of the disputes that, 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 that I see going on in the world, be they social, political, whatnot. So often I notice an attempt to deal not with the issues but to demonize the other party. The other day I was home and I heard a knock on the door. There was a young woman out on my porch and it turned out she was trying to get my signature for a petition having to do with workers' rights. And I explained to her that I generally don't sign petitions without a pretty comprehensive uh, knowledge of, of the issue. But rather than take my hint, uh, she uh, decided she was going to educate me. So she started to explain how workers get sick and how they need to take time off and they can't get fired for that. And I stopped her and I said, you know, that seems like a pretty reasonable position. I mean, you know, who, who, who doesn't hold that way? I mean, who argues against that? And I think my question kind of caught her by surprise for a moment, but she, she ended up saying, you know, the corporations. And, and I said, really, well, what, what's the position of the corporations? And by that time, she, she, she tried to, 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 to explain it, but it, it wasn't going well for her. And pretty soon I had her packing off down the street. But I think this is, is so indicative of, 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 of the discourse that we see in so many arenas today. We need to learn the lesson of the Mishnah, which is rather than get caught up in the content of our arguments, we need to get a sense of the feeling. And whenever we're feeling dislike, judgment, any kind of nasty feeling, when we don't sense that the other person is genuine and has something to offer, it's a good sign 
that the discussion should be shelved. And that's true, by the way, of the other person as well. If we don't get a sense that they have a positive feeling for us, that's a good time to shelve the discussion. You know, you can take it up another time, perhaps, but you can pretty much bank on the fact that you're not likely to uh, come out of that discussion with anything of lasting value. Thanks so much, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Have a great day.